Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about chalkboard basics. So this one's going to be a little different than the glass one I made, the glass basics video. It's similar, but it's different. It's not going to be as long for sure. And chalkboard is different than glass. So glass is more forgiving. You can do a lot more cleaning things off and not having to be as careful. You can scrape really hard to get it off. You can't do that so much with chalkboard, so you have to be more careful. Plus, it's opaque, so you're not going to be able to do the tracing through like you do with glass. So you have to be a little more creative with chalkboards. And you can use just about everything you can use on glass that I showed you. Um, it's just that the more permanent things like the oil-based markers and the alcohol-based markers are both a little harder to get off of chalkboard than they are in glass. Like I said, you have to be a little more careful because you could potentially ruin the chalkboard painted surface here. Now, if you do, and I'll talk about this later, you can't, you, you always have the option of being able to repaint in chalkboard paint again. So like if you mess up that bad and you can't fix it, you can paint over it. It's just, you have to paint over it. You can't really get it off. Most of the time you can get it off, but depending on what you're putting on here or if the chalkboard is not well made to begin with, like maybe it was a homemade one that wasn't made correctly, um, not that all of them are, but you know, this, this, the chalkboards I have, most of them are, you know, manufactured. So, you know, they have quality control and stuff, at least most of the time. Um, but They've held up really well with what I've used them for, so I don't. I haven't really used like a DIY type chalkboard. I might do that sometime on this channel. Haven't done it yet. So, but we're gonna talk about a few transfer methods. You've seen me do a chalk transfer on this channel before, a couple times. Uh, we're gonna go over that. I'm not gonna do another one, but we're gonna go over the few times I have done it on this channel and kind of show you again and explain exactly what it is, a little slower, and. Talk about seasoning the chalkboard, which I've done, and cleaning off everything that you need to clean off. And that's pretty much it. It's not going to be as long as the glass video. So let's get started. Okay, to demonstrate the oil-based marker on chalkboard, I'm going to use this board I made with oil-based markers. You may recognize this from the first video on my channel, the Yard Game Scoreboard. Um, I'll link that if you want to see, if you haven't seen it already, but I used oil-based markers to make all the lines and everything on here, and I did that purposely because I didn't want it to come off easier, easy. So, because you're going to be wiping your scores off, you know, with more temporary things, but you want this to stay on, even if it gets wet, you know, especially since you use this outdoors most of the time. So, you know, that was my reasoning behind using oil-based on here. Um, now, as I was making that, you see in the video, I did use, if I had any mistakes, and I did, <laughs> I still do actually, <laughs> stuff I haven't really taken off. Um, I used a cotton swab and acetone to take it off. I have some right here. And I'll show you, I might have to get in closer, but I will show you like there's a few spots in here I could take a little more off that I haven't. So I'll do that. And then I did demonstrate in that video, I sprayed it with water and the water didn't do anything. I don't really want to potentially um, ruin another chalkboard by putting oil based on it. Cause you know, they're expensive. I don't want to, you know, potentially ruin one. So I am Get some acetone on here. Uh, I will get a. I will get a more close-up view of this. All right. Acetone. So you see, there's a little bit extra here. Um, I hope you can see that on the video. There's some here, like in these squares down here. So I'm going to try to get this off with the acetone. like a long process. Mm -hmm. 
actually what I might do just to demonstrate, I'm going to just go through this line here. See, see it is coming off and I'm just going to, when I touch up, I'll just fix that. But it does make it a little cloudy and it's like you have to do even more. So now I'm going to try to see if it works better because I didn't try this last time. Alcohol. So then I'm just going to do the same line because I'm going to be redoing that. So I'll do it above. See, that doesn't work as well. It's the acetone that works, just like on the glass. I mean, it does take it off eventually. But I'm using the other side now with the dry little cotton swab, wiping it away. So the acetone works better on oil-based markers, just like in the glass. So I wonder if I were to use alcohol-based markers, if the alcohol would work better. So I want to be, I'm going to do this kind of conspicuous. I mean, I could just paint over this. So let's just paint a new line in there with this mirror alcohol marker. And then we'll let that dry. And then we'll see if the alcohol works better on that. I mean, I know I'm not letting this dry very long, but it's pretty dry. It's not really wiping away. It's wiping a little bit, but not really wiping away. So let's see what happens when I use alcohol. Yeah, that comes right off of the alcohol. And there's a little left. Let me try the acetone. Big puffy one for some reason. Ooh. All right. Yeah, the acetone takes it off pretty well too. But there wasn't much there. I don't know if it was like dripped, the alcohol had dripped onto it. But either way, I mean, they both work on both the oil and the alcohol based markers. It's just one usually works better than the other. And you can see like it didn't damage as I can, as far as I can tell, it didn't damage the chalkboard. Like it's not picking up the paint on the chalkboard. Um, you know, this was a, you know, professionally manufactured board. So it's not like someone just painted this, in which case it might be a little bit more iffy, but that's that. Now I want to show you also, it's a water-based marker. I'm going to go over the same spot. And you can see it's not you know, as opaque and obviously this isn't straight. I'm doing it at a weird angle, so but let that dry a little bit. While that's drying, meanwhile I'm going to show you and I showed this on that video as well, but this is a chalk marker. So I'm just going to write on here. Maybe I should do it down further because you can't really see that well. Do it somewhere over here. Checking how dry this is. Yeah, it's not really coming off of this, so it must be pretty dry. So that was the water-based marker. So this is a dry cotton swab. I'm gonna go put some water on it and then I'll show you how it comes off. Now, I know we haven't done this in this video yet, but this is a little harder to take off than this with water, but it comes off. This is still the oil here on the bottom. So I think, I think this is pretty dry. This already, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really, even if you had it on there for a bit, it doesn't really stay that well. Um, that's why that's 
chalk markers or chalk is what I used for this just scoreboard and then I can just wipe it off and if it, it's a little stingy I can use a wet um, cotton swab <laughs> to take care of it. Now I gotta get this a little more wet because it's kind of dry now and you can just like spray the board and just wipe it off and this oil based is not going to come off. makes it real easy. Now again, I don't know if you can see this, but that's what I did before that. This is the dry side, it's just going right through it. And then wet. I probably use a cloth for this, not a cotton swab. So I'm gonna go get one. clean, nothing's coming off. So that's that. Now let's talk about how to transfer design onto a chalkboard. There's different ways. Now, just to show you, um, back in that video, I did make a chalk transfer for this part. So I, what I did was I drew it out on a piece of paper, exactly how I wanted it. I measured a box that was exactly as big as this and then I put my little design the way I wanted it. So then what I did was I traced my drawing that I made in pencil with a Sharpie so you could see it on the other side of the paper and I flipped the paper over and then traced on the back side of that paper with the drawing coming through the paper and now it was like a mirror image. I traced over that with chalk and then taped that right here and then went over it again, right side up. So like where the Sharpie was on the right side, the first side I started drawing on, and then the back side had chalk on it. So then when I pushed in all the spots, the chalk got transferred onto this chalkboard. And then I was able to go over it with a paint marker to make it, you know, so less likely to make mistakes, you know, that I wanted to make a kind of design in my head beforehand and I used a pencil because I kind of changed it a few times before I decided on what exactly I wanted to put on there. So that's the reason I did that. Now, I mean, for these, all I did was I drew a line in the middle because I wanted them kind of centered. And then I just counted the letters again and I sketched them in with a Stabilo All Pencil, which you've seen me use many, many times. And there's different um, varieties of that kind of pencil that you can use that are gonna be able to wipe off very easily with a cloth. But anyway, I sketched them in that way and then if I had to make any changes, I did. And then I just came back with a paint pen and just put them in. So that was how I did all that. Now, the lines on this, I used a couple things. I used my T-square and I put, I made an inch margin around the entire thing so it was real easy. And the tape I was using was an inch thick so I just put an inch tape around all the margins here. And then on the tape, as I was making the lines, cause these, I had to make them different. Like these go all the way through and these are split up. So I had to like make little notes on the tape along the way. So that's what I did there. And then when I was doing the vertical lines, I had to remember, no, I don't want anything here. So I kind of, I marked in a temporary way, like something here, so I knew not to draw through there. So that's how I did that. So you can always use a temporary type of thing, whether it's a piece of chalk, a chalk marker, or like a Stabilo All pencil to be able to just wipe it off easily when you're making something that's more permanent. When you're making a sign that is, that you're gonna make it with chalk markers anyway, it gets a little harder because I have done that a few times on this channel, like my holiday chalkboards and stuff, uh, because the chalk marker is also very temporary, so it's hard to kind of erase around it. Um, there's different ways you can get around that. You can use like either my T-square that I have that you know, goes over the whole thing or like the yardstick 
and just use that as a guide instead of writing things on here. You could do that. Depends on what kind of design you're making. Um, but you can always you can always make a chalk transfer of the entire thing if you really wanted to, and then just you know get it on there and then just copy it with a paint marker and then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, again, it really depends on what you're making. So we're gonna look back at a few of my chalk. Um, projects up to this point and kind of I'll point out kind of the things I've done and one of them is to make sure that you season your chalkboard before you use it especially the for, for the first time like you buy it new or you commit if you're making a chalkboard yourself you definitely want to season that um, it doesn't always 100% you know prevent 100% of ghosts ghosting but because let me see if I have an example, actually. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on camera. It's kind of, um, maybe. Like this Mary right here that I made for Merry Christmas hasn't really come off that well. And, I mean, I, ha I haven't like tried to scrub it off, but I have I've reused one that's been kind of ghosted like this, and once you get a new design on it, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what you're putting on. Um, but not all of them did this. It's just maybe I just didn't get this one seasoned enough before I did it. But I, like I said, I think you can see that Mary here. <laughs> um, wish you a Merry Christmas or something. So that's, that's an example where it didn't exactly, but that's kind of what ghosting looks like. Um, worst case scenario, if you wanted to, you could just, if it gets bad enough, you can just take some more chalk paint and go over it. Um, I might try to use like acetone or something because I only used water to wash these off. So maybe I'll update you if I ever <laughs> try that. But that's an example of what ghosting looks like. And you try to prevent it with doing the seasoning and most of the time it helps, just sometimes it still breaks through. But like I said, uh, if it really, really bothers you, you can paint over the surface again with some more chalk paint and you should be good to go. Season it again though, and then it'll look okay. Um, also, I wanted to say that uh, we are on this channel going to look at different ways you can kind of stylize using chalk and chalk markers to make different like types of style and design on chalkboards. Uh, that's going to be a separate video, at least one, but maybe even more than one. Um, there's all different like kind of things you can do, especially with chalk itself, that give you a different look to your sign. So again, we're going to do that at some point, just not today. So here is an example of a chalk transfer I did on this channel, one of my first videos. I will link it, of course, but if you want to go searching for it, it's called the Halloween-themed menu boards, and it was from last October. In this video, I created a logo for a fictitious restaurant I was making just for this video, called the Creepy Cadavern. I drew the logo first on Procreate, and then I took it into Adobe Illustrator and sized it to scale to the size I wanted it to be on the chalkboard. And then I did a chalk transfer onto the chalkboard from that. And I filmed this one a little better, so I figured I'd use this as the example. So here is my scaled version of the design that I printed out. Then I used a piece of tracing paper over it and I traced with a sharpie so that I could see through the tracing paper. And then I flipped that piece of tracing paper over and traced with chalk on the back side because I could see the sharpie through it. And then I flipped the paper back over and put the design where it was supposed to be on the chalkboard so the chalk was on the back side and going onto the board and the sharpie that I wrote was facing up. Then I traced over that Sharpie again with, an, with Sharpie. I could have used anything, but I used a Sharpie again. And that would transfer whatever chalk is on the backside onto the chalkboard. So when I took the paper off, it's a little faint. 
and it's hard to see, especially on camera. But there's a chalk outline of all the lettering, the design that I made, because I pushed the chalk from the other side of the paper onto the chalkboard. So then I was able to just trace the chalk with a chalk marker that I was using in that case. Could use a paint marker or whatever. And I was able to get like a very close to the original design onto the chalkboard from my original drawing. And you can see it was pretty close. I have a side-by-side -side or top-and-bottom version. But that is how you do a chalk transfer. All right, so that's it with chalkboard basics. Uh, I hope it was helpful. And we're gonna have more about chalkboards on this channel, different chalkboard designs and stuff coming on the channel at some point. So this is kind of like the basic knowledge that you need to know. So I hope it was helpful and I will see you next time. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for this week's video. Stay tuned until the very end. I've got some bonus footage and sneak peeks for you. But first, I want to thank you, yes you, for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you found it to be helpful, use those buttons. If you want to see more, you can follow Shrush Design on social media. The links are all in the description. And if you would like to browse my online shops, I have two Etsy shops and a Fiverr account also listed below. If you are local to southeastern Wisconsin, I have even more services available, so you'll want to check out my website for that information. But wait, there's more! If you happen to be planning a wedding in the near future, I have another YouTube channel called Shrush Design Weddings, through which I discuss all of the choices you'll have while planning your wedding. And I also have another channel called Poised Pencraft, through which I teach the art of lettering, calligraphy, and some graphic design skills if you want to learn how to create your own designs from scratch and make each project truly your own. Links for both of those channels are, you guessed it, in the description. So if you're all subscribed now and ready for next week's video, I'll see you then. For now though, I'll leave you with the bonus footage and sneak peeks. Enjoy! No assistant Chaz again this week. He must have been sleeping while I was filming. So the bonus this week, I'm just going to show you some outtakes of me not being prepared for filming, basically. Some real life. Here you go. So I am getting some acetone on here. Uh, I will get a, I will get a more close up view of this. As soon as I find my other tripod. Where is it? I just saw it. Hold on. <laughs> there, not there, not there. There. I swear to God, I just saw it. I swear. Not that one. Did I cover it up with something? There it is. It's on the floor. That's where it belongs. acetone works better on oil-based markers, just like in the glass. So I wonder if I were to use alcohol-based markers, if the alcohol would work better. And I only have a metallic alcohol marker. And I don't even know where it is. <laughs> Let me think. that. Now I want to show you also water-based marker.
bottom. I probably use a cloth for this, not a cotton swab. So I'm gonna go get one. So if you ever wonder why there are so many cuts in my video, that gives you an idea, doesn't it? Anyway, let's get on to the sneak peeks. First of all, I want to address that I did skip one of the videos that I said I was going to do. I'm having a little trouble putting that one together, so I'm going to be delaying it for now. And that was the Layout Basics video. It will be coming out eventually, and I'm going to be doing actually a series related to it. It's just that this first video is not turning out the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to probably redo it and, or at least redo some of it and put it together better. So that's that. Um, but then next week, Wednesday, on March 8th, and then the week after that on March 15th, we're going to be doing videos about envelopes. So I've done a little bit about this in my holiday envelope video when I was making my Christmas cards last year. But I'm going to be doing a more dedicated, polished, basic video on the 8th that's all about envelope sizes and the inserts that go in, like the size that they would be, like which, which you need for which kind of card or insert. And then we're going to be talking about all the rules that you need to know, again, for mailing envelopes and that's according to the United States Postal Service because that's where I'm from, United States. So that'll all be on the video that's coming out next week on the 8th and then the one that's coming out on the 15th is going to be like a beginner how to make a design, how to make guidelines for an envelope, how to transfer or create your design on an envelope and other stationery. So we're going to be talking about maybe making like place cards and stuff for weddings and stuff like that. So that will all be kind of in that video. And for real, I'm going to get back on track with my Wednesday videos on this channel. I've been a little messed up the last couple weeks again. Um, but those are going to be back on track. I already got those all ready to go planned and ready to film. And unless I have any technical problems, I should be able to get those out on time. Meanwhile, I do have this Procreate series going on. For those of you who are interested in that, those videos are still coming out. And I plan on having at least one a week, but probably going to be picking up the pace here soon, having maybe two or three a week of those basic videos. And then we're going to start doing the projects. So those will be coming out as well in between these big main Wednesday videos. So that's what you have to look forward to. And I will see you next week. Bye.